Thomas and the Shooting Star. It was a busy day on the island of Sodor. All the engines were working hard. They wanted to finish their work as quickly as possible. That night, a shooting star was going to flash across the sky. Anyone who saw it could make a wish. None of the engines had ever seen a shooting star before. As the sun started to set, the engines were watching the darkening sky. They were thinking about their wishes. I'm going to wish to be grander, huffed Gordon. I'm going to wish to be redder, snorted James. I'm going to wish to pull the mail forever and ever, peeped Percy happily. Thomas didn't know what to wish for. Never to have to work with diesel again, he thought. Or never wearing my snowplow. Or never having to pull smelly fish, he tooted. The fat controller arrived with some engineers. The power station has broken down. There are no lights on the island, he boomed. Thomas, you must take the engineers to repair it straight away. Be sure to go the quickest way, he added. Look out for the shooting star, Thomas, peeped Percy. And remember to make a wish. I will, whistled Thomas, and he steamed away. The power station was on the far side of the island. Thomas puffed happily along. He made sure to take the quickest way. But then he came to a long, dark tunnel. If I go through the tunnel, I won't be able to see the sky. Then I might miss the shooting star, he wished. So Thomas puffed back up to the junction. And he took a different route. This isn't the fastest way, he chuffed. But if I puff hard enough, I'll be at the power station just as quickly. But Thomas wasn't at the power station just as quickly. He was at Henry's forest instead. The trees were tall, and the branches blocked out the sky. If I go through Henry's forest, he wished, I won't see the shooting star. So Thomas took a different route. He puffed around Henry's forest. His journey was getting longer and longer. Thomas came to the cutting through Shen Valley. The track through the valley was the fastest way to the power station. But the valley was deep and the cutting very high. If I go through the cutting, I won't see the shooting star, he wished. So Thomas backed up and went another way. Thomas's journey was getting even longer, and it was even later. And with no electricity on the island, Sodor was darker than ever. At Tidmouth Sheds, the engines were all still thinking about their wishes. All except Percy. He was worried about his friend. Thomas should be back by now, he peeped sadly. Where is he? But the engines didn't know where Thomas was. And neither did Thomas. He could hardly see anything. He didn't know whether to puff left, or right, or up, or down. Now he wasn't thinking about the shooting star, he was thinking about the power station. 
If I had taken the quickest way, the lights would be fixed by now, cried Thomas, and I wouldn't be lost. Cinders and ashes, I wish I could see. Suddenly, something flashed across the night sky. It was the shooting star. It shot across the sky like the brightest rocket that had ever been. It lit up the island from coast to coast. Now Thomas could see the power station. My wish came true, cried Thomas. Thank you, Star. And he steamed off as fast as he could. Thomas arrived at the power station. The engineers quickly got to work. Soon the power station was fixed and the lights came on all over Sodor. Thomas puffed happily home. He passed through brightly lit stations. As he pulled into Tidmouth, his friends were talking about their wishes. Gordon said he felt grander. James was sure he was redder. Percy was just happy to see his friend. I wished you would come home safely, he peeped. Thank you, Percy, tooted Thomas. Both of our wishes came true. I'm gonna be your baby.